The Guam EPA is still unsure of the environmental impact of the explosions that Cavers 3 and 4 might have caused. PNC's Tim McHenry is standing by with more. Tim? Thanks, guys. Continuing our coverage of the explosion at Caverses 3 and 4, today we're focusing on the spill that occurred as a result of the blast. The substance, believed to be a petroleum product of some kind, was discharged from the explosion site. Initial reports say some 500 to 1,000 gallons were discharged from the site, with an unknown amount going into the water. We spoke with Eric Palacios, Guam EPA, to find out more. Here's the story. And the explosion at Cabras 3 and 4 early Monday morning has caused a residual oil spill that has leaked into the surrounding waters. Shortly after the explosion, the U.S. Coast Guard sent out a press release saying that a, quote, oily waste was discharged from the explosion site and spilled into the water. We spoke with Guam EPA Administrator Eric Palacios. One of the concerns when dealing with any type of material spilling into a marine area is whether or not the ecosystem has been affected. Palacios says the Guam EPA is still unsure of that. What is very concerning in that, uh, you know, it, it would be detrimental to marine life. It would be detrimental um, to uh, even on, on land and, and potentially any groundwater source that might be in the area. Fortunately, response was pretty swift. Um, and so I know that everyone is trying to contain uh, the spill and, and begin the cleanup and continue cleaning up uh, as expeditiously as possible to further minimize any negative impact. According to Palacios, the Guam EPA was called to the scene to make sure the Guam Power Authority, who is considered the responsible party to the spill, is doing everything it can in performing the work the right way and that there is zero contamination when everything is done. Palacios says that the Guam EPA was a first responder to the scene and immediately began work to assess the damage. In terms of testing the water then and now, Palacios says the Guam EPA is not set up to test the substance that spilled into the water and thus they aren't even sure what exactly the substance is. I don't know whether the Coast Guard has done anything on, on its side. We have, we have not, uh, and that's primarily because our lab isn't set up to test for petroleum-based product, uh, products. Um, however, uh, with the contractor in place, we can direct the contractor to collect samples and cause for uh, the analyzing of those samples. Okay. Um, we do believe it to be uh, some type of petroleum-based product. Though. According to GPA, part of the procurement services for for the company who is contracted to clean up the spill includes collecting the samples of water and getting them analyzed. One of the once the final samples are analyzed, the results will be sent back to all agencies involved, including the Guam EPA. In terms of a potential citation to GPA, Palacios says it's too early to tell. Right, I think right now it's it's still premature to to adequately comment on that, only because I don't think GFD has been able to officially begin its investigation into the explosion right so pending that um, I can't say whether or not we will issue some type of violation down the road um, I will say though that if it is warranted uh, fortunately no one got hurt but if an NOV is warranted I mean that's something uh, that we'll definitely consider the explosion which occurred early Monday morning resulted in a spill of substance into the surrounding waters one worker said the initial cleanup right after the explosion produced 15 plastic bags of the substance just in one area of the spill. With the main body of water practically clear, efforts have shifted to a retention pond directly outside of Cabris's 3 and 4, the site of the explosion. For PNC News, I'm Tim McHenry.